it's me again with another confused con corona tutorial and today I'm going to show you how you don't need an iron to put on petrols. So what you need instead of that is a hair straightener and if you're anything like me you will never own an iron but you will own a hair straightener since like your since like seventh grade or something. So and to make things extra difficult and somewhat more interesting we're not only going to do a patch because that's easy. We are going to do some glitter foliage that basically works the same way, it's just a bit more complicated to go around and put it on a cap. So what you're gonna need is whatever you're gonna put your shit onto, a patch or the foliage and if you use the foliage, baking paper is your fucking best friend. Don't do it without, I nearly ruined my straightener this morning because I thought I could and didn't read anything and never mind. So. Um, I already started this one, so uh, started the first letter of this so I could see how it turns out because I took, of course, the cheapest version, the one dollar version of this foliage and well, let's see where we go there. So first with the foliage you gotta, uh, you, ah, ha, ha. you gotta preheat your straightener to 150 degrees Celsius, that is, and uh, otherwise this will basically melt and that can get messy too. But uh, I accidentally did it a little, a little bit hotter with the first one because I didn't really pay attention, as I always do. And yeah, so much for that. So you're going to remove the extra layer. And then stick this onto your trousers because otherwise it will not stay onto anything. You place your stuff where you want it. You cannot pin this in because obvious reasons, but maybe if you're really skilled you could try. I, but the needle will be stained afterwards, so be careful with that. Then after you did that, you put this foliage, uh, the, pa uh, the baking paper onto it. I hope this is a proper English word, I honestly don't know and I can't Google anymore because we're already rolling. So and then we get to the complicated part from my side because the cap has not the kind of form you want for this, but I'm gonna go from the back and hope it still does it. It doesn't. So fold it in. Wait a second. These usually don't hold on their own, but if you're a bit careful, this might work. So la la la, put this onto there. Why are you doing that to me? Ah. So as you can see, this is. Um, I take the small one. This is a bit of work, it's not hard, it's just taking some time. So, straightener, and then we go from the back and press it on. And as I learned in my previous attempts, we move it around a lot. Just uh, Don't just uh, keep it in one place because otherwise it would stick more to the paper than to the actual fabric. I don't know why that is, but I accept my fate. So, and after just a few presses, good to go. And yeah, that actually looks right. I'm gonna do a few presses more because I am paranoid and happy that it works. So, as you can see, this goes pretty by pretty fast and it's quite easy to do once you've figured out how to reach it. But, at the, but the uh, st straightener gives you the opportunity to First heat from both sides, sides. That's quite good, and you're also more mobile than with a with a, with the classical iron. So, um, to show you how this works with with um, hey brain, you should smoke less. Uh, with the normal patches, it's basically the same way, just without the paper. It says you need the paper, but come on. Uh, in this case now. So we got this little patch here and we got this little sleeve here and I am going to put this onto this part of the sleeve like right down here because this is basically just for showing you guys and yeah well so maybe like this or like this would you like more? More like this I guess. So I'm gonna try to hold this onto camera same here, 150 degrees, just go over with the straightener like you would with your hair. 
trying to make it somewhat visible for you that this thing is small. And here you can um, you can stay in one place with a straightener for a while because these things, yeah, there's nothing else they could stick to. They're already sticky on one side, so that's okay. And you won't ruin your straightener with it, I promise. So, yeah, that's working. Um, what you up to lately? How are you doing? How's, how's quarantine going for you? I personally had quite a good time actually. I had a lot of time with friends online and I got into doing this stuff again. And I, uh, and I didn't have to work for a while. Now I do, which kind of fucks me up because the store I work at is, let's say, not that much into workers' rights and everything. And they basically fired the whole staff they had, uh, they had to cover insurance for or gave them less to work so that these people aren't insured over them anymore and just we small jobbers have to stay there and trust and believe that's bullshit and the things they are telling us and everything either way it's been quite depressing for me to uh, to go back there and because i always had problems with having a proper rhythm in my day and a proper structure and i made that happen for myself while in quarantine in quarantine and well but not all things are bad about this i think because what I talked about with a friend yesterday, um, there is a rise of humanism in some ways because, I mean, we have pictures of these people who buy pointless shit they don't need, like, who needs a hundred rolls of toilet paper, be serious, and all that stuff, and raiding the stores, and, but on the other hand, what I see is people being way more friendly and helpful. Not, not 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 necessarily in daily life with everything, but there's nearly no house where in the city where there isn't a little a little paper um, or a little sign in the in the bottom floor that says if anyone in this home needs help, uh, call here. We are going to help you. We're going to do everything for you. I did that too, and most of my friends did. And there is a um, like a fence a block away from here where people just uh, place some place bags of food and and of medical equipment and all that stuff for people who can't afford it to, to just take and pick up. And on the internet I see a lot more people being creative, a lot more people reflecting and everything. So, and also what, what I think is really important, people start to realize who the people are that run the system, uh, keep the system running more or less. The nurses, the small jobbers in the supermarkets and everything. These people get finally get acknowledged and recognized for what they actually do under even dangerous circumstances. And I hope we'll stick to that. That would be nice because I think the thing that's, that we really should learn from this crisis is we need each other and we need to stick together and we need to be good to each other. We, we learn how much we miss our friends, co-workers or whatever, or our family. We learn how important it is that there are people keeping shit running. We learn how important it is that we have physical and emotional contact to each other and how bad loneliness can be. So I hope this temporary awareness isn't that temporary and that we might change the system towards helping these people, towards better paying nurses and uh, maybe raise minimum wages and all that stuff and also that we're just a bit more kind to each other because random acts of kindness mean so much in, in so many ways to so many people. Just a few days before a shop closed down there was beautiful thing happening to me. There was, I'm, I'm usually, when, I, when I'm at the cash register, I try to be as nice, friendly and funny with the customers as I can, even though I hate my job. It's because these people aren't, aren't at fault for me standing there or having a bad day or having a bad job. They're not the ones making decisions and anything. So, um, uh, there was this girl and I don't know, I made a small joke or something. I smiled at her, wished at her to be, uh, to stay safe and healthy and anything. And that she seemed to really want it. She was like, you really made my day, thank you. This means so much to me. And I really, I didn't do anything. I just smiled at her and I just was, from, from what I understood, normal and nice for what I understand to be nice. And the, the cutest thing happened afterwards. Like, 
half an hour before our shop closed down, she came back. I was talking to a, to, to a customer, she waited like for 10 minutes or something and says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't want to be creepy or anything, but you were so nice here. I, I, I gave here and she brought me a box of chocolates that basically said thank you. And I don't know, the day was stressful and everything and she did that and I nearly broke down in tears. And this, the little smile I gave her and the little joke I made meant, meant so much to her and in return her gesture meant so much to me. I keep telling the story to my friends and I have this bag of chocolate unopened on my, t on my, on my desk every day. Wait, I get it for you. Here, this one. See, it says now, see. And, um, and I, uh, is, that was so heartwarming. We, we, we couldn't hug each other because Corona was already around, but we stood there for like 10 minutes and said, told each other that we like each other and that everything is nice and fine and just send some love each other's way. And um, that was beautiful and that meant the world to me. And same should go for you. As a, I think we, we should keep moments like that in mind and be more like that, and especially in times like these where we are made aware of how much we need each other and what what social interaction and anything basically means. So, but that's just a little story to keep you away from what we were initially doing. I just wanted to get that out. But here, you see, it's on, it sticks. Oh my God, I'm bad at finding the camera. Ta-da. So, and we're just gonna finish this little beauty here. And I already fucked up the spacing, my god, I'm so bad at this. But, well, okay. Yeah, yeah it's gonna be like this, who cares? It's somewhat DIY, it doesn't have to look ultra polished. <laughs> That's what I keep telling myself with my drag. So, la la la. Ooh, that's a bit far away. Knock, knock. Knock, 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 So, yeah, again, just pressing this onto here. Trying to not burn the whole cap with it, but 150 degrees won't light up your clothing immediately. But you should check whether the fabric is resistant to that kind of temperature. Some artificial fabrics and even some naturals are not. Some will burn, some will shrink, some will smell weird, some will melt. So keep an eye out for that. So that went faster than the ones before, but I still want to do this from the other side. So how do I get there? From behind, I guess. <laughs> so um, by the way, if you enjoy the tutorials or the songs more, tell me in the comments, please. Tell me what you'd like to see, give me ideas, uh, you know the song request thing. Five dollars per via PayPal, and then write into the, write a comment or uh, write uh, write me a PN with you if you paid, and tell me what you want to see. I um, oops, hmm. I'm melting stuff on the back of my cat, cat, but that's okay because no one's going to see that either way. Hmm. Yeah, that happens when you buy super cheap stuff, but and yeah, so you see, I fucked up the A a bit, but. Again, you're not here for polish, aren't you? Are you? If you are, you're wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> da, da, da. So, the last one. And then this video is done and I can play Animal Crossing again. I got it last week and it's a blast. It's amazing. It really helped. Especially in the times where I've worked. The first time I came... came uh, the second time I came home from work this week was the worst. I, I really felt bad and we had a bad day at work. Our boss was there and talked a bunch of shit and everything. So that was awful. And uh, I really, really felt bad. I cried a lot and I screamed a lot. And I, you know, when you fall back into old mechanisms you, you already got rid of, but you feel like you're like 19 again and not able to cope with anything, blah, blah, all that stuff. Yeah, that was, that was my Monday. <laughs> So, but Animal Crossing helped a lot with getting over that. So, we are on to our last letter. And as you can see, it's the other way around. Initially, that wasn't planned. <laughs> I had to recut the R, but I kind of liked the idea of the G being, other, B being the other way. Um, 
uh, going into the wrong direction because then we have to close the, basically the full lines on, on the outside. So while I'm talking and you can't really see what I'm doing, I'm going to try to change that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Again, I'm still learning and uh, catching the camera is something I have to learn too. So, but final letter, then you see the final thing. And this video is done. And I can go eat breakfast maybe. This, uh, but yes, as you can see, the conclusion of what I'm, uh, what I'm saying in this tutorial is this shit goes incredibly fast. It's incredibly easy and you don't need that fucking ironing thing because, yeah. Again, who would need that for anything? So... I think this is done. Oh, it looks savvy. So, ta -da! That's what we got. I know it looks very di uh, uh, DIY, but I mean, it is. So, what's the problem with that? And also, this hat was like to the two euros, so like I care. I can always make another one. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope time in quarantine or wherever you are, if you're working, Thank you. I know thank you isn't enough. I know you need money. If I would, ha if I have some, I'd, I would give it. But I'm, I'm grateful for you, and I hope in the future your jobs will be respected more. And I wish, I wish strength and love to everybody out there, whether you're alone in quarantine or whether you're having children at home and having to watch them and losing your mind or whatever, whatever you are doing. I just hope you're well, and I'm sending you some love. Bye.